Made in America Autobiography of Sam Walton Sam Walton Made in America is a story of success. It's the story of Walmart, the largest retailer in the world and the largest employer in the United States. The book is both an autobiography and a business guide written by a person who embodies the entrepreneurial spirit of America. Sam Walton started from scratch and built an empire. If we combine the net worth of all the heirs of Sam Walton, it will be more than the net worths of Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, or Jeff Bezos. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button while it's still on your mind. We're thankful for your support. Sam Walton was born in 1918 in Kingfisher, Oklahoma, and at five his parents moved to Missouri, settling in Columbia, where he finished high school and went to college. His father, who had all sorts of jobs, a banker, a farmer, a farm loan appraiser agent for insurance and real estate, was a hard worker and a good negotiator. His mother had the idea to start a little milk business, so the boy got up early in the morning to milk the cows and to deliver the milk. One thing that his parents shared completely was their approach to money. They just didn't spend it. The boy grew up during the Great Depression, which taught him to value a dollar. Sam had always sold things. At seven or eight, he started selling magazine subscriptions and had paper routes from the seventh grade all the way through college. He raised and sold rabbits and pigeons too. After graduating from the University of Missouri with a business degree, he joined the Army. By the time he went to the Army, he had two things settled, who he wanted to marry and what he wanted to do for a living, retailing. He got married to Helen Robson on Valentine's Day, 1943, and she gave birth to their four children. When Sam Walton left the Army in 1945, he knew he wanted to go into business for himself. He started reading books on retailing and spending time in stores studying how they work. According to Walton, he was a person with a passion to compete and a person who copied from other people when he liked something. Following the advice of his wife to start the business in a small town with a population with no more than 10,000 people and to start without a partner, he opened his first store, a Ben Franklin franchise, in September 1945 in Newport, Arkansas a cotton and railroad town of about 7,000 people, using his own savings and a loan from his father-in-law. Walton soon realized the essence of discounting. By cutting your price, you can boost your sales to a point where you earn far more at a cheaper retail price than you would have by selling an item at the higher price. He began to mull this idea in Newport, but it would be another 10 years before he took it seriously. He tried a lot of promotional things that worked really well. They put a popcorn machine and ice cream machine out on the sidewalk. They made money by controlling expenses. But Sam had to leave the town and the family moved to Bentonville, a small town with only 3,000 people. His five and dime adopted the new idea of self-service with checkouts at the front of fluorescent lighting and the store did well. Walton had discovered that there was a huge demand in small towns. Post-war America was changing rapidly, but retailing stayed the same. Small specialty stores and variety stores. Sam Walton started offering much lower prices, greater variety, satisfaction guaranteed, and long opening hours. He tried to buy direct from manufacturers, cutting out the middleman. By 1960, Sam and his brother Bud Walton had nine variety stores. The first Walmart was opened in 1962 when Sam Walton was 44. The first stores were plain and chaotic, but prices were generally 20% less, and this alone attracted customers. With improved distribution, they'd found a way to grow at 30 to 70% a year. By 1980, there were 276 Walmarts, and by 1990, the company hit $1 billion in profits with 1,528 stores. In the year Walton wrote Made in America, Walmart sold 27 million pairs of jeans and 280 million pairs of socks, enough for every man, woman, and child in the USA. Click here for part two of Sam Walton Made in America to learn more about his business philosophy. Thank you for watching Read and Grow. Tell us in the comments, what's your favorite book? 
Facebook, Read and Grow One. Twitter, twitter.com slash read and grow one.